This week's theme on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast is the ultimate guide to RMDs in 2024. I don't know what it is. I'm kind of an RMD nerd. I have a lot of clients, especially as they get close to the start age for RMDs, they ask a lot of questions. So I have a lot of conversations with clients about this. And so I just, I love talking about it. It's once you understand it, it kind of makes sense. And once you get going after the first couple of years, it gets a lot easier. But leading up to the year that you're, you have to start your RMD, there's a lot of decisions to make and there's a lot of things to understand and things that are confusing. So one of the major sources of confusion is how to figure out what your required minimum distribution amount is and what that number is based on. And then also because that RMD is taxed, figuring out how the taxes work, how it's going to affect your overall taxes. A lot of people are blindsided by the taxes in the first couple of years of RMDs because whatever the amount is, and it can be significant, especially if you've done a great job in saving for retirement, especially through accounts like 401ks and IRAs. If those accounts are significant, you're going to have significant RMDs and it can create some tax surprises and uh, some unhappy circumstances when you're writing that big old check to Uncle Sam for the taxes. So we want to try to reduce that as much as we can. That's part of what I have discussions with with clients and I'll be covering later in the week. I'll talk more about the taxes. But for now, let's talk about how to calculate your RMD. So it's based on two factors. It's based on the account balance from the previous year and your age. So if we just use a simple example here, let's just say you have one IRA account and that account balance was $500,000 on December 31st of last year. So that's the amount that's going to be used to calculate what your RMD amount is. And then the other factor is your age. So let's say you are turning 74 this year. So the factor that you're using for that age is 25.5. Now it changes every year and you can look this up and you can do it manually. There's also lots of free online calculators that you just plug in your account balance and your age and it tells you exactly what that RMD amount is. But if you're going to do it the old school way, you take that account balance, divide it by the distribution number which in this case, because you're 74, is 25.5. So 500,000 divided by 25.5 will tell you what your RMD amount is for the current year. So it would be $19,607.84. That is the amount that you are required to withdraw from your IRA, 401k, whatever that account is. It's a pre-tax account. And now you owe taxes on it when, when you hit that RMD age. And you're going to repeat that. So if you have multiple accounts, you're going to repeat that for all accounts that require a RMD. Again, online calculators can help with this. I'll talk more about aggregating RMDs tomorrow. That's basically taking multiple accounts and combining them together and figuring out the total RMD. You can certainly do that for calculation purposes. So if you have, you know, four different accounts that have four different RMDs, you can take that total account balance and figure out what the RMD is, but you're going to run into some problems with that because certain accounts, you can't aggregate them all together and take out the RMD from the one account. Sometimes you can, but not all the time. So I'll talk tomorrow in more detail about how you can aggregate those. But for now, I think it's best to just know what your RMD is for each individual account then that's kind of your baseline. And then you can figure out which ones can be lumped together and simplified and aggregated versus which ones need to be withdrawn that RMD exact amount from that exact account. Now, the other thing too here is you want to, if you're married and your spouse has 401k IRA to any tax deferred accounts that require an RMD, you want to calculate those too. That's going to ensure you don't miss an RMD you don't take too little, you don't pay a penalty. It also helps you plan for taxes. So for taxes, in your first year, it's kind of tricky to figure out because any RMD amount that you take from your IRA accounts or 401ks, any tax deferred account that requires an RMD, whatever that RMD amount is, is going to be subject to income tax. So it is taxed as income. 
So if your total RMD is $30,000 or $50,000 or $12,000, whatever that amount is, that is going to be taxed as if you were working a job and you made $30,000 or $50,000 or whatever that RMD is. So knowing that it's taxed as income is important. You want to try to estimate as best you can what your total taxes are going to be. This is hard in the first year, but you want to calculate your RMD. Even, even if you're not planning to take that RMD until December or later in the year, because you do have all year to take the RMD out, you still want to calculate it at the beginning of the year because that allows you to do some tax planning. You can select your withholding amount. Now, most people, when you take a distribution, you're going to have tax withholding on that required distribution. You don't have to, but I find that for most people, it makes sense because when you take your distribution, if you select tax withholding, which you can do federal tax withholding, if you live in a state like I do that has income taxes, then you can select a state tax withholding as well. It's convenient because whatever that amount is that you select for your withholding, let's just say it's 25% and you take a $10,000 RMD. So $7,500 gets deposited to your bank account when you take that RMD and the other $2,500 or 25% goes directly to the federal government or the state government. It goes to pay the taxes and the financial institution, wherever you have your IRA 401k, They take care of sending that money off for you. So it's convenient. We have a pay-as-you-go tax system. So for a lot of people, it is advisable to do the tax withholding when you take your distribution. And it also helps you not having a surprise tax bill when it comes time to do your taxes because you didn't withhold anything for your RMDs. So again, this is something that if you have a tax advisor, someone you work with, ask them for advice. They're the best person to give you some guidance here. But if you're doing your taxes on your own, you want to try to estimate best you can what the amount that you should withhold and make that decision up front, both for federal and state taxes, if that applies. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Ashley Michike, and this is the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast.